In this video, I'll be doing an overview and demonstration of my final year project, which was to design and build a brain computer interface or BCI uh, based on a electro electroencephalograph or EEG. This is the EEG measurement circuit. It's single channel. These are two measurement electrodes, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, we're sampling at 1000 Hz, and this is microcontroller we're using STM32F303K8. That's uh, sampling and then commun uh, communicating with the PC. So it's communicating through UART, but because I wanted the circuit to be isolated from the PC, uh, there's opto optocouplers on the UART lines isolating uh, the circuit from the PC. It's powered by a 9 volt battery, and we're using a driven right leg as our ground, so that'll be used to um, compensate for interference on my body, which will be mostly from 50 hertz noise from mains voltage. So I'll show you the electrodes. So these are the two measurement electrodes I'm going to be using. I can see I have this homemade electrode, which is made from an ECG pad. It doesn't really want to focus. Give it a second there. It might focus or not. There we go. So this is uh, from an ECG pad, which I have here. So these you can get in bulk for fairly cheap. So I just cut out the center, took out the gel and glued on a rubber shower hose washer. So that is now gonna work as a reusable EEG cup, which uh, if made this way, it's much cheaper than buying EEG cups because they can be like tens of euro. This per electrode is less than euro. So fairly, fairly cheap. And um, so, these are twist together to reduce noise from um, EMF and I will be back in a minute with everything all set up and I'll show how the BCI will work and then show them some, some um, EEG signals. So I have everything connected up now. I have um, the two measurement electrodes connected between OZ from the 1020 system. You might be able to see OZ there, a little bump there. And then I have the second measurement electrode connected to here, uh, my left mastoid. And then the driven right leg is connected to my right mastoid here. So between OZ and the left mastoid, I should be recording uh, the EG from the opposite the lobe, which um, processes visual information. And the what I'm going to try trigger, the easiest thing I can trigger is alpha waves, which uh, is in the region about 10 hertz. And they can be triggered by rest, uh, wakeful relaxation, which basically means if I close my eyes and relax, you should see a 10 hertz spike. With my eyes open, you should see it kind of level away everything else. There'll be just like across 0 to 100 hertz, uh, a lot of just random peaks. I can't really say what any of them are, but once I close my eyes, I can definitely say if there's a peak at 10 hertz, that should be an uh, alpha waves. So I'm going to stop moving and start this recording and show you the trace. So now on the top you should see um, the trace from the EG, so that's real time trace. And see there's a lot of activity but I can't say exactly what it's caused by. And down on the bottom we see an FFT of every one second. And see that uh, well, 50 hertz is taken care of fairly well, it's not causing a peak. But once I close my eyes I should see a big spike around 10 hertz and should also see that in the uh, real-time trace on the top. So I'm going to close my eyes now and hopefully see see that. <laughs> yep, I just seen when I opened my eyes there was a 10 hertz spike there, so that proved that does work there. So, yeah, that was the EEG measurement. So I'm going to go on to the brain computer interface now. So I forgot to mention in the last part of the video, um, so I filled up these electrodes, the, the cup electrodes I made, with this Signa gel. So this is conductive gel, which will um, make sure that this has a connection through my hair to my skull. And then um, before putting on the electrodes themselves, I used this uh, new prep, so I rubbed that into uh, my scalp. And that is to reduce the electrode skin impedance, which would give me a better signal. So now I'm going to get on to the BCI that I created. 
and then just start recording that now. So here we have five flashing checkboxes. So this one here, vertices to the left, that are flashing at 10 hertz. Then we have 20 hertz, 15, 5, and 12 hertz. So with these, I'm going. I'm trying to trigger steady state visually invoked potentials. So that basically means if you if you flash a constant stimulus, so in this case it's a flashing checkbox at a constant frequency, I should see that frequency in the occipital lobe from uh, the brain processing the flashing, uh, the changing of the uh, checkbox. So by using this, I have this simp simplified keyboard here with uh, all the English letters and numbers and some special characters that the user, if they look and concentrate on one of the checkerboxes, you should click it and then subdivide uh, showing that option. So I'll show that now, click into the 20 hertz box. So see all the options get spread out between them and we'll say we'll pick H. So we're, they're looking at the uh, 15 hertz box. So up here we've typed H. So this is working as a keyboard so the user doesn't have to use their hands, they can just look at the different checkboxes and the BCI should react to where they're looking and type out stuff without them having to move at all. So there is more work to do on the feature extraction side. Um, right now it's just working through mouse clicks, but it, yeah, it doesn't work reliably through the signal process and I've tried. There is a lot more work to be done there. So I do believe it can work. I do, I do have proof that my um, circuit can measure SSVEPs but uh, extracting them in real time, I need to continue work on that for it to become reliable. But I think I will continue on that in the future. So that is my final year project, or a uh, quick overview of my final year project. I'm going to post instructions on how I made the circuit and the BCI and going to post the code and stuff like that online, uh, probably up on my blog. So thanks for watching.